Hello and welcome to lesson number 3.2, part B in this case, as it is quite a long lesson to learn here, and we will start right away with more styling on layers. First of all, we have um, ha had a look at different symbol levels, different ways on how to deal with fillings and strokes of polygons and uh, line features. And um, for the next session, we will like to have a look on, on um, symbol levels and how they are uh, visualized on the map canvas. Therefore, we will apply a certain style to roads. Currently, roads are just lines, right? No differentiation between size or importance or whatsoever. And you cannot even say, well, where one line ends and one another starts, right? It looks a little bit awkward so not like we used to see it on google maps or wherever so double click on roads and currently there's just a simple line here but what happens if i add a second line and not only a second line but a line with a different width so first line i would like to make this black and let's have this a size of 1.5 and the simple line above, we will do this in white and with a size of 0 0.8. Let's have a look. Click on apply. Let's say OK. And now this is the road network. Now, if you have a closer look, you might see something that is, well, let's say, not that nice to look at. Every street is a geometry of course so let's use the information tool or identify feature tool click on this one here this is now one feature it starts here it ends there or vice versa i'm not really sure at the moment but in fact it ends there so there is no real like like a hard connection between this line and the second line so they are they are rendered they they are put on each other, and that's it. So, so we can see the line ending, and it's not fading over to the other line. So it has the impression that it is somehow a feature that is not connected to another feature. But of course, in streets, it is a, it is not like it seems. So we will adjust it with layer ordering. And therefore, once again, we will click on, or we will double click on it, go on advanced check symbol levels and enable the symbol levels define the order in which the symbol layers so we have two layers here are the rendered the numbers in the cells define in which rendering pass the layer will be drawn so we'll just click on ok that's it layer zero so the first layer that will be drawn will be the black line and above it will be the white line just click on ok ok and now isn't that a beauty so really looks quite good already but let's investigate a little bit further this looks good this looks good as well there's a little bumper here so what I was trying to achieve here is to see okay we can play around with line caps and endings of lines as well at the moment we just the rendering function at the moment we have a square ending you can change this to round this to round as well so now the bumps in the overlapping area are gone and it looks more fluently between one and the other So readjust the rendering. Now we have a very nice view and nice rendering of the streets layers. What is quite important if you're playing around with styles and you would like to achieve something cartographically of interest, then make always sure to save your styles. Therefore, double click on the symbology properties, go here down below to styles save style we will 
save this as a QGIS QML style file. We'll save it right away here. Okay, let's have a look on the other. As SLD style file, SLDs are quite interesting if you would like to apply a style in um, GeoServer. So if you're planning to serve your feature service, like features on the web, you should also try or think about saving it as an SLD style file because GeoServer can read those SLD style files and apply the style to the web, to the feature service. Okay, now we have saved the style. There we are. That's fine. Still, we don't have some sort of differentiation between the different types of roads. Let's have a look at the feature um, of the on the attribute table so again. Open attribute table. So what you can see here, there are different types of highways, right? So we have cycleways, footways, and so on. And of course, there are more important streets and less important streets. Therefore, we will now apply a certain style, which is a categorized style. We will deal with that in detail later on. But for the moment, we will apply a style that is already saved for us. So you can see a single symbol. If I switch back to, well, let's say categorized style, and now go back to single symbol, the symbol is gone. Every work you have done on creating a very fancy, cool um, layer representation is gone. So please make sure to save it. So categorized, we can select the value here, like the type of highway, right? And symbol layer. But we will deal with that later. For the moment, we will just load a style here. And we will load it from file. We'll apply everything that there is and say, well, okay, let's have a look here. Advanced levels demo.qml. Uh, load style. There we are. So now we have three different symbols. They are differentiated between highway. So if the attribute highway has the value of trunk, tertiary, or all other values, this style will be applied. And you can see three different styles to each category. Let's say apply. Okay. And this looks now so much better. And yeah, it reminds me of a really good cartography um, or a real good road book or whatsoever, where you can see how the streets are uh, set in the, the countryside. So that's it for layer ordering, so symbol ordering and category style for the moment. Then Currently, we have always, always dealt with the more simple approaches, right? So let's go back to most of symbols, go back to single symbols, apply, okay? So also for water, we have used simple fills. Even for buildings, we have used simple fills. This is a full fill with a fill color, solid fill color, and then we have here some sort of diagonal uh, stripes or, or a pattern fill, but still it's a simple fill. Let's go and explore some other ways of representing your vectorial data. Therefore, we'll open up the places. Here we have a simple marker. Now you can see that there are different types of, of this symbol layer type. First of all, of course, the simple marker, we have different forms. Uh, you have some attributes assigned to them, like you, or like the triangle. This one, you can play around with the rotation, with the stroke, with the colors, and so on. Um, but we are quite limited to these um, to these forms. So let's go over to ellipse marker, and we can see we have another form. We can also play around not only with the symbol width, like in the simple marker, right? There is no ellipse to my point of view. No, there isn't can only play around with size, but with the ellipse marker, you can play around with the width and the height of the value. Then we have the filled marker, where you can apply just the fill. Then we have a font marker, where you can assign some letters to it. Let's say this, make it 10. 
say apply just close this just to see how this turns out in the in the real world so at each point of places there is now a letter go back again for marker let's go over to the geometry generator we will cover this in another lesson then we have the raster image marker where you can apply a raster image like a photo or like something like this here click on apply now i have the image qgis logo on the point marker quite interesting if you would like to or i don't know like make a photo map or something else then there's a simple marker we have already seen this one and we have the SVG marker. SVG marker are quite important because you can play around with the SVGs quite easily. Those are vectorial based formats, images in a, on a vector basis. So you can um, design your own images as well. You can alter those. And there's quite a big library already uh, delivered to you with QGIS where you can uh, play around and search for the custom icon you are interested in using. Like this one. And this is now an SVG in the in the map canvas. And then we have the vector field marker, where if you have a lot of point measurements and those have some orientations or speeds assigned to those points or uh, directions or whatever, you can use this one. But for the places now, I would like to um, use just a very basic marker, simple marker. Come on, on the vector field marker, simple marker with a white border. So, therefore, we'll add another simple marker. Make this here three, no pan, fill color is white, and we will add a pale green. With no pan at all. Let's have a look on the apply. Now that wasn't the case, but if you remember correctly, then we had some possibilities to adjust this. Advance, go to symbol levels. So once again, OK, OK, and deploy the style. So now it should look fine. Let's switch on the some standard background. Now we have the greenish outside and the green color in the, in the inner stroke. Once again, there are line features as well. And of course, line features have another set of ways to, to represent the line feature. Let's go to the roads layer here and open up the simple one. Normally we were using the simple line, then we have arrows where there's an error from one vertex to the other vertex. So in this case you can see it quite good that it's just jumping from there to there. We have once again the geometry generator. We have a hash line where you can define the pattern fill and the uh, symbol that is used for the hash. Then we have the marker line. We can apply a marker with the given interval. And we have the simple line we're using at the beginning. But for the roads, let's assume we have here a simple road. We'll apply a simple marker with the size of 1 and the interval as well with interval 1 how does this look like hmm, interesting click on ok and you can see that all the roads are just simple markers with points on the road layer this is one way 
for the polygons we have quite a dis quite a diverse way of um, dealing with the styles because of course we have the fill of the polygon we have the outer line so polyline if you would like to say so and um, therefore therefore we will work on the water uh, on the water polygon there it is as you remember we have applied a filled or fill pattern here a simple fill and there are different ways like centroid fill where you just place a marker in the centroid let's apply this All right and let's have a look and then everything is gone you will just have a marker on the geom on the centroid so the inner um, the, 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 the inner point of a polygon we have once again the geometry generator we have a gradient fill pattern we can apply different directions you can define the direction here on the reference points oh, let's close this again the line pattern fill we can apply line pattern point pattern fill oh that would look so good at the moment we have the rest of the image fill quite interesting if you would like to apply I don't know like like different uh, waterish images or oh, my fancy picture here well that does not look so good at the moment but of course it is due to the fact that we are using the image width of 100% now it still looks a little bit ugly but you will see what i mean then we have the svg fill once again with all the symbols that are part of qgis so you can select one say apply and it's a symbol fill apply a texture fit with so every 10 pixels every 10 millimeters in this case we have a new symbol and we have the shape burst fill let's apply this oh, this looks not so good because we have two similar colors let's use white and blue that is quite interesting if you would like to apply the intention to indicate deeper water level let's go with This one, quite interesting if you would like to work with that. You can even uh, define something like total tent transparent, where we will go from the original background color, in this case the OSM standard color, to our own color. Looks quite interesting. Scan double click on water go back here and select simple fill well, that we have done already then there are some lines or, or you know, symbol layer types for the outline like arrows hashed lines mark lines symbol lines and that makes it so interesting to play around with the styles of polygons for the water we will apply a light blue and a dark blue color scheme So once again, we'll have the fill, a simple fill. Fill style is solid. Fill color will be a dark blue. Oh, light blue. Sorry for that. Okay. But of course, with 100% opacity. And we'll have a stroke color of light blue. No, dark blue. With a width of one. Press and apply. Now this is a very basic style, and we will apply another fill, a point pattern fill. Once again, with very small markers, and this is a size of zero point five. 
darkish blue. And the point pattern fill has an option to play around with the pattern um, distances. Let's apply this one. Now we have point pattern fill where we can indicate, okay, this is a very special uh, place. This is our legend or this is our legend entry for water areas. So it always depends on, on how you would like to use your map. So what type of audience you have, um, who's, a, who's a viewer. If you have a very official map, you should not be too fancy with colors and gradient fills and try to achieve something very artistic. But um, then there's some audiences where it might apply better. For the last lesson in this uh, session, we will apply different styles for the protected areas. Currently, they are listed here just as yeah, this uh, purple uh, purple fill. And we will apply other fill, not with purple, but with um, lightish green, pale green. Go there. Oh. Maybe use this one. This looks interesting. But it will not apply any 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 stroke here. Stroke color is non-relevant for me. We'll use a no pen. So this is the basic. Once again, I will go here and add um, a marker line here in this case. I will not use the points as markers. So once again, you have here also simple markers, so you can play around in a cascadial way. Right, so you can also apply SVG markers on the line of the polygon. Uh, but for our purpose here, we will apply an arrow like function with a size of four. But the marker line will have, will have a much broader, well, let's use five. Because if you apply an interval that is too dense, like one, you will not even see your symbols, right? So let's go with five. Click on apply. Let's have a look. Well, this is interesting now, but I don't like the reddish color, so we'll use a darker green one here. Now this looks even better. You can then also play around with the rotation. So let's assume that the uh, arrow should point inside or inwards. You can also apply an anchor point, top, bottom. Let's play around with that one. So this is now an internal point of view, right? So we will use the anchor button bottom. Press OK. So all the arrows are now pointing inwards. And this makes it even better. That's it for the moment. It was a very long lesson. We will see you, or I will see you in the next lesson where we will talk about, first of all, geometry generators. And, and maybe a special lesson, we will talk about those SVG files and how you can create your own symbols for QGIS. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.